Welcome grade 12 to part 2 of the circular flow topic. In this video we will focus mostly on GDP, gross domestic product. Sometimes it's called GVA, gross value added. GDP and GVA are synonyms, they mean exactly the same thing. So what GDP looks at is income from all goods and services produced within the country. So the money that we get from all the goods and services that are produced within the country uh, that's how we calculate GDP. All right, highlighted in blue, real GDP. Remember, real GDP is just GDP minus inflation or GDP without the inflation. So if you take the GDP minus inflation, you will get real GDP. All right, GNI on the other hand. Remember, GNI or GNP are also the same thing. Gross national product and GNI means gross national income. They mean exactly the same thing. So the GNP looks at income from citizens only. So income produced by citizens only. So you want to only get the income that's going to be staying in the country. So how do you go from GDP to GNP? So to go from GDP to GNP, you must add all the income that's coming from other countries. Uh, let's say a South African artist, for example, performs in the UK. They're going to bring that money back to the country. So we add it. Um, but the income that's going to be leaving the country, let's say Beyonce comes to perform in South Africa. She's going to be taking that money uh, back to the US. So we need to subtract the income from other countries. So to go from uh, GDP to GNP, you take the GDP at the income that's coming from other countries by South African citizens minus the income that's going to be leaving the country um, and then you will get your GNP. All right, injection. If you go to the doctor and you get an injection, that injection is coming into your body. So injections are all the monies that are coming into the economy. We've got three injections. We've got investments. This one is obvious. If businesses are investing money in the economy, that's an injection. That money is going to be coming into the economy. Government spending, G. So if government spends money, that money is also coming into the economy. So it's an injection. Exports are also an injection because if we export goods to other countries, they must pay us. So when they pay us, that money is coming into the economy. So exports are also an injection. Leakage uh, or leakages are just the uh, opposite of injections. So leakages is all the money that's leaking out of the country or the money that's coming out of the economy. So we also have three leakages. Savings. If you decide to save your money at the bank, you're taking that money out of the economy. So it's leaking out of the economy. Taxes, taxation. The government taxes you, you can't use that money. It's going to the government. So taxes are also leakages. Finally, imports are leakages. Remember, imports means we are buying goods from other countries. So if we buy goods from other countries, we must pay for those goods. And when the money leaves our country to pay for those goods in other countries, then it's leaking out. So it's a leakage. So it's important to understand uh, the three injections and the three leakages if we're talking about GDP. All right, so the next few concepts are very important. The marginal propensity to consume or the MPC. So if you got a, an extra 100 rand, how much of that 100 rand would you consume, would you spend? That would represent the MPC. Um, how much of that 100 rand would you save? So the marginal propensity to save, the proportion of your additional income that you would save would give you your... MPS. The MPC and the MPS are, are indicated by decimals and they go together. So let's say, for example, you would spend 60% um, of your income, that's 0, 0,6, then that means you would save 40%. If, uh, use another example, you would spend 30%, then that means you would then be saving. 70%. If you would consume 90%, then that means you would save 
ten percent. All right, so the two go uh, hand in hand. Uh, what you don't spend, what you don't consume, you save. All right, and the last concept in the slide is very, very important. The multiplier effect. The multiplier effect represented by the letter K. All right, what is the multiplier effect? The multiplier effect says that the initial spending in uh, the initial spending is going to produce mm, a much larger proportion of the income. So let me try to explain that better. If you decide to go to the tuck shop and purchase a pie, you're going to have a pie for lunch. How many businesses, how many industries are going to benefit? So let's just try to think. So the flower industry will benefit, right? Flowers used to bake that pie. Uh, sugar industry, some sugars used cooking oil. All right. Um, what else can you think of? Salt, um, meat, right? The meat must go into the pie. So, um, so many businesses are benefiting. And let's say maybe the, the, the lady at the talk shop uses her car. Uh, so that does the petrol industry. So many industries are benefiting the soul. Many industries that will benefit from just that one purchase. So you, if you spend just a little, the income in the economy is going to multiply. That's the multiply effect. Uh, so we, uh, this is the formula that is used to calculate that multiply effect. So let's go to some of the calculations on the multiply effect. All right, so calculate the multiply effect if the marginal propensity to save is 0, 0,2. So how do you calculate the multiply effect? K is always equal to 1 over the MPS. That's the formula for calculating the multiply. So in this case, the MPS is 0, 0,2. So the multiplier will be 1 over 0, 0,2. All right, we're going to calculate that in a minute. Uh, the same example, the next example is very similar. Calculate the multiply effect if the marginal propensity to consume is 0, 0,6. Remember again, the formula for the multiply is 1 over the MPS. So the only issue here is that we are given not the MPS but the MPC. It's not a problem. We can change the MPC to MPS. We know they must add up to 1. Together they must add up to 1. So if the MP C zero comma four, uh, sorry zero comma six, and the MPS will be zero comma four. Again, we're going to come back to those calculations in a minute. Uh, let's go to the last question of the slide. How will income in the economy change if fifty billion is injected in the economy? So how will that fifty billion multiply if the marginal propensity to consume is zero comma seven five? So before we see how that fifty billion is going to change. We first need to calculate the multiplier. Again, multiplier is 1 over MPS. For this question, we are given MPC again as 0, 0,75. So the MPS will be 0, 0,25. All right, so 1 over 0, 0,25. So for these questions, you're always going to uh, calculate the multiplier first before we look at how that 50 billion is going to multiply. We need to have the multiply. So let's just go to the calculator to Okay, I want to start in the previous slide. We had one over zero comma two. So if they're spending, the income's gonna multiply by five. Let's look at the next one. One over zero comma four gives us two comma five. So if there's any spending, the income in the economy will multiply by two comma five. Now let's make this practical. Let's go to C. There's the multiplier formula for C. So if there's any spending, uh, the income in the economy will multiply by 4. 
So what this means is that 50 billion, if that 50 billion is injected into the economy, let's say the government spends 50 billion, right? That 50 billion, we know the multiplier is 4. It's going to multiply by 4. And the income in the economy will actually be 200 billion. So that is the multiplier effect. The government only needs to spend 50 billion to get 200 billion worth of income for the economy. All right, so I hope uh, this information was useful. Thank you very much. Uh, I will also be doing a very, very short video on the different methods that are used to calculate GDP in the future. So look out for that video also. Thank you, Great Hops.